Earth's magnetic field is weakening, and history tells us what comes next. A full magnetic pole reversal. It's not a theory, it has happened before. And in today's video, we are going to uncover what the world looks like the last time it did. Hi, this is Josephine and welcome or welcome back to the People's Perspective where we dive into the complex world of social and political issues. Thank you for tuning in. I've got a great show lined up for you today. As usual, we will start with the hot topic of the week, then take a look at the uh, last week's comment section and we will wrap things up on a positive note with the happy news of the week. So let's get to it. And in today's video, we will dive deeper into last week's topic, the pole shift. We have explored what mainstream scientists say about it, which spark a bit of outrage in the comments. So I thought, why not go all in today and talk about a full magnetic pole shift? What happens when the poles flip? What happened the last time it did? Let's start by refreshing what we know. There are two different things we are talking about here. Magnetic pole shifts and flips. A shift is when the magnetic pole slowly moves across the Earth's surface, like in this picture. Right now, the North Pole is shifting towards Siberia. A flip, though, is what we will focus on today. That's the when the North Pole becomes the South Pole and vice versa. Sounds crazy, right? But yes, it literally happens. According to the UK Natural Environment Research Council, links in the description, over the last 10 million years, the poles have flipped on average four, four to five times per million years. Now, so how do scientists know this happens? The answer lies in geology. Patterns in volcanic rocks, especially those found in the ocean, reveal the history of magnetic reversals. That's pretty wild. Hmm? How do we know a flip might be coming? Two main reasons. First, official magnetic field measurements have been taken since around 1840, when the magnometer was invented. Those measurements show that Earth's magnetic field has been weakening. Going down. And fun fact, scientists also studied the magnetization of ancient clay pots and found that Earth's magnetic field was about twice as strong during Roman times as it is now. And secondly, as I mentioned last week, we are overdue. The last full flip happened about 780,000 years ago. So should we be worried? Maybe not to worry, but for the sake of this video, Let's explore what might happen during a full magnetic pole reversal. Is it all flowers and roses, like some scientists say? Or should we actually be preparing for a global event? Because let's face it, sure, it might only confuse animals, mess with the technology, but could it trigger massive tsunamis? Wind stronger than any hurricane we have ever seen. Or volcanic eruptions. Or Wild weather shifts? To understand that, let's look at the last full reversal, the bronze Matuyama reversal, the most studied flip in the history. So what was Earth like 700,000 years ago? I checked the weather, climate, and back then Earth was in the Pleistocene epoch. <laughs> which started about 2.6 million years ago. And fun fact, until 2009, scientists dated it only to 1.8 million years ago. But it ended around 12,000 years ago. People call it the Great Ice Age. The Pleistocene is divided into four stages. The one we are care about today is the Calabrian stage, which began 1.8 million years ago and ended with the bronze Matuyama reversal. During the Calabrian glacial and interglacial cycles happened about every 41,000 years. So 
every 41,000 years, it was or cold or warm. After that, uh, after the flip, after the next, uh, during the next uh, stage, those cycles stretch out to 100,000 years. During interglacial periods, temperatures were close to what we have today, maybe a bit cooler. Huge ice sheets cover much of North America and Euro Asia. The tropics and subtropics were drier. Because of the repeating glaciation and melting, sea levels constantly shifted, sometimes over 100 meters lower than today. And Siberia was connected to Alaska by a land bridge allowing animals and elderly humans to migrate. And another funny fact, not just animals and people moved, plants migrated too. At that time of the reversal, a glacial period was starting all already underway, depend on the region. Hmm? And what about health effects in the magnetic pole is weakening, especially the one from solar radiation? Earth's atmosphere already shields us from most of that. It's comparable for, to like 300 centimeters thick concrete wall. The magnetic field gives extra protection, but even without it, life on Earth isn't left totally defenseless. Humans and other species have lived through many magnetic reversals, and there is no clear evidence that they cause mass extinctions or major elevatory leaps. We know all this thanks to geological, archaeological, and, interestingly, mathematical studies. And no, there is no evidence of global tsunami or massive earthquakes, especially caused by magnetic reversal. That doesn't mean those things didn't happen. They definitely did, but not because of the flip. And they were not, like, life-threatening. I mean, they are life-threatening, but you know what I mean. It wasn't, like few kilometers high waves coming through through the continents. They just happened as a part of Earth's natural chaos. But there is one interesting correlation I found. The Australasian Tekatite Stone Field, which CNN called one of the largest meteorites to ever hit the Earth. It struck between 788,000 and 785,000 years ago, right around the time of the last reversal. This field covers 20 to 30% Earth's surface. If you zoom in in the picture that I'm showing you, somewhere between Thailand and Vietnam, in Laos, you will see a red star. That's where researchers say the meteorite hit. Could the impact have triggered the reversal? Maybe. Would a weak magnetic field have made Earth more vulnerable to a meteoroid strike? Possibly. There is another similar case, a meteoroid impact in Ghana, creating Tot Lake, followed by a full reversal. But again, no solid studies confirm a connection. So what do you think? Do you know of any catastrophic events linked to other reversals? It's clear the climate was affected, but no mass extinctions. So drop your sources and theories in the comments below. I am looking forward to reading all of them. First of all, thank you to everyone watching the last video and leaving comments. As of right now, uh, it's Saturday. The video has over six and a half, as of six thousand five hundred views, and I can't stress how much this means to me. And to everyone who clicked and watched the video, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you are my stars. Uh, if you manage to stick with this video around until now, let me know what other topics you would like me to explore. And uh, I just want to say I love to uh, I love interacting with you all and I'm truly grateful for your support. Uh, so in this comment session we start with big shout out uh, to NGS Cuts I and uh, Marcia McCrory for kindly subscribing. 
welcome. I hope you enjoy being part of this community. And they also left comments, so that's why a big shout out. And some other people have a special attitude toward life. Uh, I'm trying to learn similar mindset, but mm, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, honestly, I am a bit worried about everything going on with our planet right now. But have a look. At John Slack 3064, he writes, There is nothing we can do about it, so why worry? Why we are all going to die eventually? So yes, uh, it's true. And that reminds me that we have this Polish movie called Life as a Fatal Sexually Transmitted Disease. And Barry H. E1G wrote, I am 66 now and been hearing end of the war all my life. And still nothing. Barry, that's true. I see similar to you. I am 38, but I have been through some of those events and I'm still waiting for them to happen. Honestly. Stanley Steamer, 4872, said, Don't worry. Drink, good drink, spend time with pretty woman and eat good steak. Yes, Stanley, uh, my drink of choice with a good steak is a nice glass of wine. Best served with, uh, accompanied with my husband. <laughs> and uh, yes, um, lastly, all time my favorite comment from Louise, uh, underline GRTX. Just got another tax bill. Hurry up, Paul Shift. <laughs> I just uh, got the tax bill last week, so uh, I'm open for different solutions as well. Duck just got caught speeding. Again? Yes, in Konitz, Switzerland, a mailard was clocked flying 52 kilometers per hour through a 30 zone. That's right, 22 kilometers over the limit. And... Here is the wild bar. The exact same, same thing happened on the same street, on the same day, seven years ago. Coincidence? Time traveling duck? Avian outlaw with a calendar? The Queen's police confirm both photos are real. No Photoshop, no April Pro's prank. The radar gear was certified and sealed. This duck got caught, fair and square. Local officials joked the bird is a repeat offender. <laughs> maybe, maybe even a notorious speeder. Is it the same duck? Probably not. But the one thing is certain, if you are driving through Kunitz on April 13, you better slow down. <laughs> Please hit that subscribe button. Like if you like it or unlike if you don't. And don't forget to drop the comment below, especially on what you want to see next. So see you next Sunday evening, Europe time. But for now, thank you to watching till the end. And as always, stay informed, stay engaged. And remember, knowledge is the key.